Hey guys, it's Jeff. So tomorrow's the 2020 election and there's been a lot of talk about civil unrest after the elections tomorrow night. So what firearms should you own coming into the 2020 elections and as early after the 2020 election results come in? What firearms should you have already and what can you prepare to own prior to the next major civil unrest situation? Coming up after this. Hey guys, I'm back. So tomorrow is the 2020 election. It's not too late if you haven't voted yet. You've got all day tomorrow to get your vote in. Uh, go to your polling place. You know, make your vote count. Make your voice count. Don't let the people that you don't agree with decide who's going to run your government for the next four years. So if you haven't voted yet, please make you know make time. Take time to get out the vote. Um, so in this video, what I want to talk about are the three guns that every home defender should consider to have. If you have one or two of these, then you're probably far better off than most people. But these are the three that I would recommend. So for somebody who's still trying to figure out what is the next gun I should have, these are the foundation guns that I think everybody should have in their home defense setup. So I'm going to start off with the high capacity pistol, right? So this is a full size nine millimeter. This comes with 17 plus one. You can see here, I've done a full review of this gun. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll link it up here in the card, but this is the MMP 2.0 in nine millimeter. Um, and one thing that every pistol should have, if it's going to be used for a home defense pistol is it should have a light. If you're going to be checking out the bump in the middle of the night, you know, what is that sound? What is, is something happening outside? You want to have the ability to illuminate whatever the target is that you're looking at. So if you're going to go outside and you're going to, you know, point your firearm at somebody, you better be prepared to identify who that is. And you need a, a light on your weapon. Now you can, you can have a light, you know, this little Phoenix flashlight. This is another video I've done on these. If you're interested in some sort of EDC light, it's a nice little light. But if you're going to be out there using a light, it's easier to have both hands on the weapon than trying to do some kind of, you know, cross draw or cross illumination. Having it on the weapon makes it a whole lot easier. It's always there. It's always available. It's always ready to go. So a full size pistol with a light attached, full capacity magazine, 16, 17, 18 rounds are ideal, but a full size pistol for home defense is probably one of the most important pieces of kit you'll ever own. Now, the benefit of having a spouse, a partner, a significant other is if you get into a situation where you're having to defend your home, having multiple firearms means that you can hand this to, you know, that other person and they could defend an area of your home while you go and investigate. Or if you're looking out the front, they could be covering the rear, you know, that those sorts of situations. These are the kinds of tactics you're going to have to start considering if the police are delayed in responding to violent incidents and with all the conversations that have been going on about rioting and looting and violence because of the elections tomorrow, these are things that you're going to have to consider. You know, consider the fact that there's a lot of municipalities right now that are defunding their police departments. They're cutting their budgets. They're cutting their staffing. They're not having as many police officers in, on patrol. And so if you have a major situation where you have large numbers, numbers of people walking through the streets, you know, inciting violence, the police may not be as, as motivated to engage as they have been in the past. So you may be left to defend yourself. And having the ability to, to meet that force with force is something that every human in America has the right to exercise. Every law-abiding citizen in the United States has the right to exercise. So my first gun, full-size pistol with a light. Now, the next gun, this is going to be a little cliche. I think everybody would probably agree that this is probably a good weapon to have, but the prices of these weapons are very inexpensive and they're easy to obtain. If you want to, you know, if you're in the market for one of these weapons and you agree with this list and this is something that you would consider, then the next one's going to make sense. 12 gauge shotgun. So, you know, you've heard uh, our our uh, political nemesis in these conversations, you know, talking about buy a double barrel shotgun. Well, I say buy a 12 gauge pump. 12 gauge pump shotgun has a lot of versatility. It has a tube fed magazine. You can attach extra 
rounds to you know various locations. You can put them on a buttstock. They are side saddle carrier. I've got a, a sling here that also has rounds attached to it. But one thing that's going to be universal in this conversation, all weapons should have a certain amount of feature sets with them. You should have the ability to engage for long periods of time, have multiple round capacity. You should have some sort of light. You can see that I have a light on both weapons so far, so the shotgun and the pistol both have a light on them. And then for a long gun, one of the things that I think is, is, is critical for everybody who has a long gun is to have a, have a sling of some sort. You know, you, you get into a fight or you're, you're wrestling with somebody who may be coming into your house and you have your gun and while you're engaging one person, somebody's able to come at you from a different angle and maybe push you or, or try to take your gun away from you. You don't want to give them the opportunity to get this firearm away from you. Having a sling, having something that attaches this weapon to your body gives you just a little bit more leverage. And we saw that with you know, the, the incident in Wisconsin where that kid had his, uh, had his AR-15 on or had his AR-15 with him, but he had it slung to his body. That gave him just a little bit more leverage and the ability to retain that firearm for people who were trying to take it away from him. So having a sling, having a weapon light, and having additional rounds of ammunition with a 12 gauge make this a devastating weapon in any scenario. When you start pulling the trigger on this thing, the holes that it creates are devastating to human body and uh, it's not for the faint of heart. So it's a highly potent, highly powerful weapon. Uh, one I recommend to every person who considers their defense of their home as important as I do. Great weapon to have. I have two, two shotguns. So the next weapon that I'll recommend, and I think this one is kind of cliche, you know, you, the Boogaloo Boys and that sort of thing. But I think what it's, this is just a representation of the kind of firearm or the kind of ability to deliver violence against people who would do violence against you in a situation where law enforcement may, may not be able to respond or you may be left to defend your home and your family for extended periods of time. This is the kind of weapon that you want to have on your side. So, yep, you knew it. The AR-15, right? So the AR-15 is one of those quintessential weapons that just about everybody in America who's been doing self-defense for a while owns. If you don't own one yet, you should absolutely consider it. I don't think there's anything wrong with starting with a pistol and moving into an inexpensive shotgun. I mean, if you look at some of the some of the lower end shotguns or even secondhand, you can get them for a very good price. But I think in the end, everybody needs some sort of semi-automatic intermediate cartridge rifle type weapon. Um, this one's a pistol configuration, shoots the uh, 5.56 five, round, great round um, in a 10 inch barrel. This is a devastating weapon. Uh, again though, you'll notice sling. All of my, all of my long guns have slings if I'm going to use them for self-defense or some kind of home defense situation. I require that my weapons have a sling, so all of them will have a sling. I use a, a, a weapon mounted optic. In this case, it's a motion activated red dot. The Romeo 5 is a great optic. I've done videos on that as well. Uh, in a 10 inch barrel for the AR-15, uh, is it still enough velocity that you can get some, some devastating uh, terminal effects with the round when it hits? Uh, again though, you also notice, got a flashlight. Got to have some sort of illumination on any weapon that you're going to use to defend your property. If something happens, bad things happen in the middle of the night. And you don't want to be the guy who pulls the trigger on something that you think is a bad situation, but it turns out to be an innocent situation that's easily explained. Don't be that guy. You don't want to be in, in those kinds of troubles in any of those situations. So just have a flashlight. They're not that expensive and they're very useful for, for that type of defense scenario. So anyway, these are my three suggestions for anybody. I'm not saying you have to have this specific type of weapon, whether it be an AR-15 or an AK-47 or a PAP-92 pistol, you know, 7.62 by 39. Whatever the weapon is, a carbine even, you could get a PCC or a CZ, uh, CZ Scorpion or one of those lines. Anything that provides a large amount of ammunition capacity, 30 rounds, 40 rounds, 60 rounds, uh, and in a caliber that will produce a terminal effect, whether it be the tumbling effect of a 5.56 five, round or the wound channel created by a 9mm and a hollow point and a carbine. Um, something that has the firepower to meet a large number of people. 
And if you have extra magazines, load your magazines. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having your magazines loaded for extended periods of time, whether it be the next week or two or three or four. Those magazines will be fine. They're not going to be hurt by having them loaded and, and in storage. But it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, right? These are like the fire extinguishers of the world that we live in today. The world is on fire. You need something to be able to put that fire out. And you don't want to need it and not have it. So have it, have it available, have it ready. Load your magazines, be prepared, be vigilant. And that's it, guys. That's all I've got. You know, three guns that I think everybody should have if you're starting your or your home defense preparedness, a rifle, a shotgun, and some sort of high capacity pistol are all great options for every new gun owner. Now, if you're concealed carrying, you know, obviously you want to have something in the, the single stack slimline configuration. And there's a whole other line of pistols and, and rifles and, and handguns that you can get into. These are the three I recommend you start with. So anyway, that's it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Look for me on my other social media. You can find me on Instagram where I post things that are not always gun, gun, gun content related. And uh, you can find me on facebook.com as well as bitshoot.com. So until the next time, I'll see you later guys. Stay safe. Bye-bye.